Well, good evening. I uh, appreciate it. Good if I first drove up out here a little bit early, it looked a little bare, but now it's some feel up again, so that's good. A little, little different. I got two songs I want you to listen to tonight. I went way back in my archives, way back yonder, and got some of the old stuff. I, one group I had when I was in Rock Hill that I met up there, some of you may have heard of Doug Hudson. He's a blind man that plays the piano. Yeah, he used to sing here. I, I, I had him, what we had him, 20-something years ago, he used to come to my former church and sing. Well, I dug up his CD, and I dug up their CD. First song ain't got nothing to do with Jack, except I like it. And it's called, When Jack Daniels Meets John 3.16. Play it, Tim. I remember the night at the end of my road in a hotel in Nashville. I was searching for hope. In my hand was a Bible I read at. On the table was a bottle that was driving me wild. I poured the whiskey into the glass and prayed it would help me forget my past. Then I read. At John 3, 16, God's word broke the hold Satan had over me. I traded Tennessee whiskey from Calvary's tree. That night old Jack Daniels at John 3, 16. Next song, when I was pastoring in Rock Hill, I met a, a family up there. I was somewhere, and I heard them sing. Of course, they, I invited them to the church, and they came and sang. I got to know them. That's 30 years ago. And I pulled out that CD uh, the day when I was around looking through something to be different. And I come up with this. There's a song on there that says, Because God Said So. And it essentially says, you here tonight because God said so. You woke up this morning because God said so. If you wake up in the morning, it'll be because God says so. Play that song because God said so. Fill it, fam. The 
stars were made and put in line to light up the midnight sky. The sun was made and put in place to make the day so bright because I said so. Because I said so. so far until it has to stop the mountains only rise so high until they reach the top because I said so because I said so Amen. That's a great song right there. That's a great song right there. Because I said so. First song about Jack Daniels, John 3, 16. I ain't got nothing to do. It's just, I won't hear it. But this song, when I read the, the Bible, and especially where we are, and not only that, but everywhere we get, it seems like, where God has predicted now, he's predicted the future, and all these things that, that we teach and we study are going to happen. Why? Because he said so. But so that you can take it to the bank. If it's in the book, it's going to happen. Whether we like it and most people won't like it, but it is. So we're in the 13th chapter of Isaiah for a little bit. But the more I study, the more I have to study. And the deeper I get into it, and I never will forget Miss Colleen telling me one time, you study too much. <laughs> she says you, you, and she's probably telling the truth. But I want to tell you, we get to verse 13. We left off uh, last Wednesday night uh, in this scripture where God talked about his coming back, about him 
coming back, about the second coming, and he warns, he's warned the people, he's warned the Babylon last week, the Babylon of Old Testament, and remember at the end of time, there is the final Babylon. So God gives warnings then, and he gives warnings to come about that. And so he says in verse 13, talking about, For some 3,000 years, I guess, I don't know how long ago exactly, I have to look it up, since Moses' flood, I mean since uh, God flooded Noah, the world has never fully seen the wrath of God since then. Oh, we can preach about it. We can sing about it. But I can tell you right now, this world here knows nothing about the wrath of and the anger of God that is coming. We can, how many times I tell you? Whatever I tell you, you think about ten times that, good or bad. Heaven's going to be a hundred times better than I can tell you what it's going to be, and uh, the other way too. So, God tells of a time in this scripture where we are right now in Isaiah, where the world will change. He says in verse 13, after he's talked to the people about the evil in verse 11 and all of these things, he says in verse 13, Therefore, since you have rejected me and, and have not responded and do not care about me, Isaiah says, let me tell you what God said. He says, Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth, shall remove out of her place. The world's never seen anything like this, folks. Nothing. When I'm going to shake heaven, and, you know, I, I'm not a scholar, but they tell me that we rotate on the axis. The world does. He, God says, well, I'm going to I'm I'm knock it off that axis. It's going to change. Why? In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And I want you to look, because verse 14, where he says, And it shall be as the chaste row running, as a sheep that no man takes up or cares about. And shall every man to his own people, turn to his own people and flee, every one into his own land. He says, when the earth starts shaking and people begin to realize something's about to happen here, something, what did I tell you at the beginning of it? Like the world's never seen before. This world has never been shaken like God's going to shake it one day. And he gives and he tells them that. Well, as I was reading that, I read a note from one of the Bibles I had, and it said... Joel, go to the book of Joel. If you want confirmation of what Isaiah said, and this is the truth, I have never in my life ever pe preached one verse out of the book of Joel, nor have I probably ever mentioned the book of Joel. But I got to reading it this morning and got to studying it. After what I knew that last verse I just read to you said, I want you to listen to what Joel. Joel is just one little old teeny book with a couple chapters in it. Joel says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, Jerusalem, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. You know that um, Jerusalem sits on a mountain. God calls it his what? His holy mountain. Because when you see Jerusalem in the Bible, what I always tell you, you're always going up when it talks about Jerusalem. He says, let all of the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. Because God says so, he knows when that's going to be. I can get up here and preach to you, and I, may, I might be preaching to you this ten years from now. And it ain't come, but he knows when it's coming. But I can guarantee you one thing, it's coming. He says, what kind of day? Boy, I, I wish I'd have got into Joel 
earlier. He said it'll be a day of darkness. What did we already read that God said when the end of time come? What did he say? And that song that we just played, what did he say? He lets the stars shine. He lets the sun give sunlight because he said so. Well, if he wants to cut the lights out, all he's got to do is say so. And a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning was spread over the mountains, over a great and strong people, there has, there has not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. God says this is a one-time event. There'll never be, there's never been anything like before it. There's never going to be anything like it afterwards. Because after God does this, I, if, I, if I can get my time frame right on this, and the world turns to darkness and, and Jesus comes back, then comes that thousand-year reign of Christ, that millennium. It's going to be great. It's going to be hunky-dory. But there'll never be a time like the time when Jesus comes back. He says, for many years or generations, forever, a fire will devise before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land as is of the Garden of Eden before them, yet behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. Now, what have I told you ever since I've been here and started teaching this stuff? First time he flooded it, second time he's going to burn it. How many times you, you've got Isaiah that said it over and over again, now you go to a prophet later on down here, and he essentially says what? Same thing. He'll burn what's in front of him. He'll burn what's behind him. He go burn this whole earth. To restore it. He said a fire will devour them. And the appearance of them is of the appearances of horses and horsemen. So they shall run. Man, and I believe this. I know that people live in fear today and think about stuff. But well, what he's saying there is, there's a day coming. When man will see things he'd never envisioned. They can, they can do all the AI stuff. They can show you all that stuff. But there's nobody smart enough to picture what is said in that scripture right there. No one. And he says, when the world darkens, and all of a sudden the fire comes, he says, and I set the world on before him. I set the world on fire behind him. What do you try to do when a fire sets? You try to run from it. Because this is going to be so great. You put all the fire departments in the world, and they can't touch this. None. None. He says, so men, when they see this begin to happen, they're going to take off and run. Try to get away. But remember what I tell you, there's a day coming when you cannot get away. God has set that day because he said so. It's what he did. He said it will be like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains. Shall they leap like the noise of a flame, of fire, that devours the stubble. It will be like as a strong people set in battle array. He said things, this is what I interpret this. I, I hadn't read anybody's interpretation of this. I just read the scripture. I should have, Dale, I didn't have time to do that today. But what I think he's saying in that scripture there, this is a time like man's never seen. What did he say? No, we'll ever see again. And when man begins to look around him, you know what scares us the most sometimes? The unknown. Who's that walking around in our yard out there? The unknown. That's what scares you. And he says, when men see this, understand. Preachers have preached about it for however long. But folks, when you see it firsthand, when you see it 
firsthand. He says, it will be, it was, he said, the fire, he talks like a sound that is going to come from the mountains that's going to sound like an army attacking you. And I can just imagine uh, how in my yard when the wind blows pretty good, you do with trees crack and blow down. When God does this, there's going to be such crackling, the fire burning, the wind blowing, and all this, that man is going to be scared to death. That's why he runs. But understand, there's nowhere to run to now. God's already said it. It's already done. He says, the face of the people in verse 6 shall be much pain. All faces shall gather darkness. I heard a preacher, I was listening to him today on the radio. And I knew this, but then he, he just kind of refreshed my mind. The only reason darkness exists is because there's no light. The only reason there's darkness, there's no light. It's dark in here Do you cut them lights on up there. Darkness represents bad, evil, light. We know this. We've been in church long enough to know. Light represents good. And he says in that day, people will be what? In much pain. Cocaine ain't going to help them. Jack Daniels ain't going to help them. There's nothing that they can take. They can take. The most powerful dose of fentanyl there is, and it will not even give them a buzz during that day. They'll have so much pain, he said. Ain't you glad you're saved tonight? Ain't you glad that you met Jesus like old Don did in that hotel room somewhere? Hey, man, when I read this, I said, Hey, Lord, thank you, God, I'm a child of the King. Woo-hoo! Pain. He just didn't say have pain. He said they would have much pain. Much pain. And then what will happen? They're hurting. They're afraid. They don't understand what they're hearing. They don't understand what they're seeing. And what shall they do? Run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of wire, of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. So what he's saying this. If they're in a compound, they're going to try to get out of there. Wherever they're at, they're going to try to run to try to find a place of safety. He didn't say but one of them, but he said, they'll be like an army. Do you do what we do understand that most of these people in this world do not know Jesus? That when this event occurs, most of the world will be lost. This is going to be a crowd of folks here. And he says they will be like an army marching, trying to get away from the enemy that's coming. He said that's what it's going to be like in that day. Neither Shall one thrust another? Everyone shall walk in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Now, I didn't look that up, but just from my little simple intelligence, what he says to me there, you can run, but you can't hide. And he said, when it comes... Remember he talked about the pain and all that. He said when the, you know, a sword can do several things to you, can't it? I reckon I ain't never had a sword. But I, I, I watch enough of them on TV. I know they can. They can cut you. They can hurt you. They can kill you. What did he say? None will survive this sword. None. Not one person. Where they run, he said, all of a sudden they'll get running together. They'll look behind, they'll get scared, and everybody will go. 
I, I, the only way I picture that is we run in here and we run in here and we see all this and we hear all this and we think maybe we need to get away. Maybe if we get in hide, you forget where we're at. God ain't never forget where you're at because he put you there. So he says, they'll climb the walls, they'll run. They'll not break ranks. When he says they will fall upon the sword and they shall not be wounded, what do you think that means? They're going to die. They're going to die. Ain't no getting out of this. It's done. It's over. Neither shall one tr thrust another. And in verse 9, they shall run to and fro in the cities. Shall run upon the walls. They'll climb up upon houses. They will enter into windows like thieves. What does that mean? They'll try to hide anywhere. They're going to break in your house. They may climb up on your roof for fear of getting away. This is, when I read this today, and I just read this, I ain't even studied it, I just read it. But God gave a picture that says, you can run, but you can't hide. You can get on the roof if you want to. You can climb like a thief into somebody's house in a window if you want to. But how many times in our life raising up have we always heard, you cannot hide from God? Isn't that true? He knows every step I take. He knows every breath I take. I watch enough crime shows on TV. Enough datelines and them things, me and my wife, we, we'll, go, we'll see a dateline or something like that before we go to bed. Now, I promise you that. that. There ain't nowhere you can hide. Let me tell you, this is what I know. If they want to find out where you at right now, they can ping that phone right there. They can say, where's Mimi at? She's sitting at 1116 Man Road. They can do that. They got it in your cars now where they can do that. Folks, this is a messed up world here. You can't hide. You can't hide from the government. You can't hide from God. You can't hide from the police. You can't hide anymore. They'll enter in at the windows like a thief trying to find somewhere to hide. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. This right here goes back to where we started. This is, this is the same thing Isaiah said. He said that that day, and I'll be honest with you, I can go to a lot of scriptures I've learned that talks about this day, New Testament and Old Testament. So it's backed up and backed up and verified in the Bible by John, Jesus, uh, Joel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, hey, they all say the same thing. And yet the world we live in, they don't want to hear this. I'm going to tell you that right now. They want to believe everybody's going to heaven. If you do enough good things, you'll go there. Or throw enough money in that plate when it comes by, you'll go there. I'm going to tell you right now, God don't care doodly squat about that. You have to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I always fall back when I see it talks about these people running, looking, not wondering, going. And I want to say this. If you went to church and your preacher warned you like you should, he'd know this. What did I preach to you that Sunday night? What did he say to the preacher? What did he say to Zachariah? You be a watchman. And you tell them. And you warn them. Because if you don't, I'll hold their faults to you. I don't want everybody to walk out of the south side of church and say, when, I didn't know this was coming. I know. No, we know it's coming. We just don't know when it's coming. The earth shall shake before them. The heavens are going to tremble. What did Isaiah say? I'm going to shake the earth and I'm going to shake the heavens. He just affirms it here. Sun 
The moon will be dark. Stars will withdraw. There will be no light. How many times have I taught you that? We read that. Darkness is coming. Go cover. Oh, well, you couldn't, I couldn't see you. When that dark, that's how thick the darkness is going to be. You won't know where to run because you don't know where you're going to. They shall run to and fro. Then the earth will quake, heaven will tremble, the sun's going to be dark, and the stars go quit shining. Last verse in this. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is great. Very, not great, but very great. Who's his camp? Us that are Christians. The Bible says that when he comes back from heaven, that he's going to bring what with him? An army. Us, that's right. We're the army. Those that are, are saved and know the Lord, and one day whether we fly away or die away, or however God decides to take us, if we know the Lord Jesus, heaven. But there's a scripture in the Bible that troubles me a lot, and this is what I see. Not all that say unto me, Lord, Lord, is going into the kingdom of God. Some will say, hey, I've done great, well, I've done miracles. I gave more money in that church than anybody. I gave more to the WMU than anybody did. I got 10 years of perfect attendance in Sunday school. But I never knew you. I never knew you. You never had a relationship with me. See, a Christian has a relationship. That relationship that he has changes him. The Bible says that what changed me when God saved me? I had a relationship with him. I played it for a long time. Me and Ron talked about that. I played that part a long time. But I want to tell you something. If you'll be honest with yourself, if you ain't got a relationship, you know it. And when you get it, and you begin to read the Bible, and you begin to pray, and you begin to go to church, I'm telling you, your life changes. It is impossible for your life to be like it was after you get saved. That is an impossibility. God says that can't ever happen. But there's a lot of people that's going to say, Lord, I, hey, I, I called you. I mean, I bought new suits to go to church, and, uh, you know, every Easter I was there. <laughs> I went there on Christmas. I went there one time at a funeral, and I went there. I've been in your church, God. But there's a difference in going to church and worshiping. I'm going to tell you that right now. There's a heap of churches you can go to. Hey, there's more churches probably than ever been in the world, and you can go to a lot of them, but there's a difference in worship there. There's a difference in that. I forgot where I was at now. Oh, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. That's us. For his camp is great. This is what I've always said, and you've always probably said too. And I've heard preachers say this. When you get to heaven, there's probably going to be a lot of people there that you didn't think make it. They'll also probably, you'll look around, I don't know this because I don't think you remember this, but this is a good saying. And if you could remember, I don't know that God's going to let us remember this, but if you could, You'd wonder, where's Brother Jimmy at? I thought he was saved. Where's old Deacon so-and-so at? I don't see his name on the roll up here. I looked in the mailboxes. He don't have an address up here. I thought, sure, he'd be here. Same way in hell. There's people going there to think they're going to heaven. But just what I told you, they go to church, Talk a good game, but if you don't live it, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong there. That's not the message that the world wants to hear. But the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. 
For he is strong that executeth his word. I read all this stuff, study, try to present where it would be interesting, y'all. But I don't know half. I can't even envision what's going to come. Y'all know that I study and I read, but I, I still as much there. I, I ain't got a clue about what he's going to do, but I do know this. Look at them three words in that verse of Scripture. It says that he executeth his word. And what that says, if it's in the book, he said our God is a strong God. And he will execute everything that he says he will do in this book right here. That's what, he sa- that's what that verse of Scripture says. I'm a firm believer. If it's here, you can take it to the bank. You can take it to the bank. He's strong. That executes his word. The day of the Lord. How many times have we read that somewhere? Y'all ever heard that saying, the day of the Lord before? For the day of the Lord is great. It's going to be great for some. But he said it's also be what? Terrible. Not just terrible, Jim. Very terrible. Anytime he puts that very front of it, whatever you think of it, you can't imagine what that means. And then he asked the question, Who can abide through it? And the answer to that is what? Nobody. You can run, you can hide, but if your name ain't in the book up in glory up there, it's going to be a tough sledding for eternity from there on. Now, I'll read the rest of Joel sometime next week. I never read this book before. I ain't never, opened, I ain't never seen it until this morning. I'm telling you, y'all got a dumb preacher. I don't know all this stuff. But I read a little reference said, read Joel. So I just soaked my Bible, and I started reading that. I didn't even have time to write no notes down. But God said, you know what to tell them. Just tell them. It's plain. Therefore, since all this is going to happen, saith the Lord, turn ye to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garment. Turn unto the Lord, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and he repenteth him of evil. That's good, eh? I read that scripture this morning in my office. I like to have a holy hooting in fit in there. I ain't lying to you. I read that. I said, what? How long have you been preaching, Jimmy? Forty-five years. Look at Miss Colleen shaking her head. I can't believe you ain't read that chapter. I ain't never looked at that book. But boy, have I missed something. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's for real there. You wait till I read the rest of it. See what happens. So, we got two verses done in Isaiah. But, um, anyways, that's, that's good enough. That's good enough. We'll pick up where we left off in Isaiah next Wednesday night. Thank y'all for being here tonight. God bless you. Have a good week. Let your light shine. It's a dark world out there. If nobody else ain't going to be the light, let us be the light. Amen. Amen.